was in a car accident, almost killed him. I said to myself, God, that would teach me. As I was tying my tie, I walked out the door, and in 15 minutes, I was airborne in my car, almost going through the front door of the church in Traveler's Rest, Sampson, Alabama, where my parents were buried. And I, I hit a tree, broke my C2 vertebrae, and was sent to uh, Dothan, Southeast Alabama Medical Center. As I was going in the hospital, the clergyman with the collar, the white collar, met me at the door, and we were praying together. At that point in time, I knew that I was in bad shape. Doctor, the, the neurologist who examined me did all the x-rays, all those things, and he said to me, you have a C2, C3 vertebrae broken. And he asked me if I believe in God. I said, I didn't believe in God, because I didn't believe in God then. I, I didn't believe in God. He said, son, every time you go by a church, you need to stop. You need to pray. You need to take the time to stop and pray because 90% 90, 90 of the people who have your injury die. 90 out of 100 die. 10% survive. Out of the 10% that survive, 9% can't walk. They're paralyzed. 1% live and can walk and have a normal life, and you're in that 1%. I still did not let that convince me there was a God. I kept sinning. I kept living the same life I did. Two years later, I challenged God again. I said, okay, big boy, indict me. Indict me for something I'm not involved in. Indict me. I was indicted by a federal court. I was found guilty of a crime. I was sentenced and was put in the a federal prison system with the likes of Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh was one of the individuals that, or the person that was executed for bombing Oklahoma City. He was in, a, in a, the prison. Uh, Jeffrey McDonald, he was in the prison. He was the Fort Bragg, North Carolina doctor that in 1979 killed his wife, his two children. And he and I were in the same cell together. I couldn't believe the situation I was in. Believe it or not, Jeffrey McDonald and I spoke about the Bible. Spoke about the, the Gideon Bible, the one, the one I saw in the New Testament, on a recreation yard, on the, on the table in the prison. I asked Jeffrey McDonald what he knew about it. We talked about it. At that point in time, I started believing that there was a God because God showed me with the car wreck and with this prison sentence, He showed me that, that He was real. I had everything taken away from me. I had monies, I had properties, I had everything that was important to me, so I thought, taken away from me. And then when I was released, I got a pardon. God gave me everything back that I had. I, I knew who God was. I had He had shown me who He was, but I still did not trust Him. I got, I, I got my law license, I, I, I had money, I had cars, I had everything that you'd want. I still did not believe or didn't have a relationship with God. I still didn't trust him enough to let him in my heart. Even though I knew that he existed because he had shown me. When I would go to bed at night, I knew that I would, if I died, I would burn in hell. Knew it. <laughs> thought about it. Wasn't enough. I finally decided through years of, of studying it and, and trying to learn about it, I married a young lady that was a devout Baptist and with her on me every single day, you know how that goes with, with your wife, I, I finally listened to her. I started learning things. I started going to church. I talked with a Gideon, uh, Bill Fillmore, a Gideon, who uh, invited us to church. We went to uh, the Delville First Baptist Church. I had a question, that, and this is why I didn't trust God. I, didn't, I couldn't believe in it. The, the cliche of once saved, always saved troubled me very much. The day my wife and I showed up for the class or for church, that was written on the board. Today's class is about once saved, always saved. He and I had never discussed that issue. I knew then that God was speaking to me. God was knocking on my door. He was in my heart. He was, he was trying to go in my heart. How many times could I turn God? How many times could I rebuke him? How many times could I not accept him? 
at the end of that, I knew it. As soon as I saw it on the wall, as soon as I saw the writing on the wall that day, I knew <clears throat> that I, it was it was all God sent. So I dedicated myself to God that day, and all the misery I had begun, I had gone through, all the misery I had gone through, was over. I didn't have anger anymore. I didn't have jealousy anymore. I didn't have frustration anymore. I had happiness. And that day, my whole life changed. All of a sudden, the things that I thought were important, money, all those kind of things, cars, none of those things were important. What was important is my, my salvation. When I went to bed at night, as I go to bed every night, I know that if I die, I'm going to heaven. And that is worth everything that I could possibly talk to you about knowing that you're going having that relationship with God and that salvation. And I asked myself and my wife asked me, what, what what's God choosing? What did he choose you to do? What what is he putting you through these things for? I know. The the whatever intelligence I have, he is going to use me to reach people. I represent murderers, rapists, robbers, and I go through people with divorce every day. Maybe I can save these people's lives in more way than one. Maybe I can save their souls. Maybe God's using me as an instrument to getting to getting to people, to letting them know that, you know, trust God and believe in God and He'll He'll be good to you. He's good to me. Life's grand for me now.